And oh, that's because I was. On. That's because I was twenty seconds late. Oh, twenty se- Oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sure. Uh-huh. I was. I just now hit the record button. So. Oh, you did. So yeah, we're live right now. This is the dork table. We're being dorkular. Absolutely. Right now. Now I have for your yeah for your uh, captivating afternoon pleasure. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Two hostages. Oh. For the price so of So, are we ready? Oh, we've been on live for about a minute. Okay, here goes. <laughs> I want a hippopotamus <laughs> Only oh, hippopotamus <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. I don't. Anyway. Well, well, no rhinoceroses? No, not yet. First, we got to say hey to the bots and bodies. Oops. Hey, thanks, Graham, and all that. You, Mary, you want to do the bots and bodies of the real hey, liberty media dot hey, com? bots and bodies. <laughs> well, right at the top, we got Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Beetle. <laughs> and then we got a Grimner in the house, the RLM God, don't you know? Closely followed by the lovely Miss Moosecoil and the lovely Miss Kate from down in Florida. Next, we have Anti, that ant with an eye. We've got some Asmodeus Asmo, as well as a Chalcedony Denis that got the O right out of there. <laughs> Yours truly is here. Hey. Java, 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 Dr. Two is in the house, as well as Hansel, Hansel. otherwise known as j Dread. Hmm. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Hansel, thank you. And then I'll clear and, and then I'll cop. <laughs> I also see a Ponder Gander. I think I know that fellow. Oh, I think right. I do. We got some poopsters and some prints. I wonder if they print with poopster. Do they print with that? Ew, that's Whoa. shitty writing. Wow. Moving along. Hi, Rob Works. How you doing, hon? I know. It's the been a while work. since I've been on, so I've got to be obnoxious at least once in a while. Just a little bit. Just a little. I see some Romes when in Romes. Doing the Romes. <laughs> got some Vanna White here as well as Vanny. Hello. Vinny, are you here? I'm here. Uh, I'm here. That's so meek of you. We also uh, have a weather dork in the channel, as well as Phantom 2. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Got some Chascura going on, as well as the lovely Cycle. Hello, honey. Hi, honey. Uh, um, got some Cyborgian noodliness going on, as well. And looky there, we got an E-Man. E-Man. You know it's I am E-Man. Anybody watch those He-Man and She-Ra things? No, okay, but I watch I watch Duty Man. Oh, okay. Got some end sim. That means <laughs> end all of this civility right now. All this civility is oh. just making me absolutely crazy. So Let's over. go back to just being nice to each other. Oh, um, okay. I see a flasher is in here. Hi, Flash. Greetings. And Greetings stuff, and everybody. salutations. We got a frumpy and a frumpy woke in the chat, as well as Gooberzilla. Hey, Hi, Goob. The hawkster. <laughs> yeah. Got uh, chop, some chop. grommet in the chat. And JJ's, 999 JJ's is here from Scotland. Also got a kiss going on in here. I don't want to do that. It's but um, <laughs> and Ooh, got some pom pom Got Vinny going over there as well. in Arkansas. Was that a Vinny smackaroonie? I, I think Vinny just saw his cousin and got all excited. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Got Sock Puppet. Hi, Sock Puppet. A serious AF. I think I know what that serious as is. Uh. Slim Jim Flib is also here, as well as the holiest Roger ever. And guess what? Dork Cakes just joined us as well. Hey there, the Dork Cakes. Dun, 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 dun. Greetings and salutations, man. Okay, violence isn't the answer. Violence yeah, it is. The question. The answer is no. yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. still, today's anyway. show is going to be entitled something completely different. Did you get to the uh-huh. end at the Holiest Roger or not? No, I yes, I got to yeah, the holiest Roger ever. I wasn't paying attention ever. at the end there. Yeah, I got a short attention span, and I got a little distracted. Okay, well, yeah. we're not going to go there because so, uh, you know, most people make obnoxious remarks. Yeah, yeah, but uh, distracted. Today's show in the door table is going to be called <clears throat> To Flee or Not To Flee, 
should never be the question. <laughs> and there, therefore, thus to quote, violence mm. isn't the answer. Right. Violence is the question. The yeah, answer, okay. And But my first question, is, Vince, yes. tonight is, Monotomous. are you Out being chased matter. out of your chosen huh? homeland? Mm-hmm. Huh? See? What? Huh? Are you being chased out of your chosen homeland? Mm-hmm. Are you chased? Well, they're building walls I, to keep you in. I think chased means virginal, doesn't uh, it? No, chased. Oh. You know, like sought after oh. in force. Uh, you know, chased. Someone you know. running after you. That kind of I shit. I saw some boy yeah. down the road. He done been chasing his cousin all around his here mountain. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but the way they write these laws and and the stuff that I see on the interwebs makes it look as though the people that live in one place, wherever one place is, are being chased out of where they live by people that are being brought in from some other place. Well, I got a question for you. Can you stick your tongue out and say, well, this is a... This is a. <laughs> hey. You know what you need to do? Stick your tongue out, I hold it, and then say, I was born on a pirate ship. I triple dog it. I was born on a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Don't you know if a dog dare me, girl, I'll there do you it. go. <laughs> Put your pants back on, Vinny. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. It's just oh. the beginning of the game. The beginning, not the end. Hold no, anyway. my bitches, girl. Watch your shit. So you're you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna take my question seriously today on the door oh, table. You, oh, you had a serious question. Yeah, do you, are you being chased out of your chosen homeland? I don't understand the question. Well, then obviously the answer for you is no. Let's pass on to somebody that understands English. How about you, Mary? English. What are you doing, life? Uh, 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 uh. Well, if you're gonna be a smartass about it. Because huh? I, I am did... not chased out of my chosen homeland. Not yet. Because homeland is wherever I am at. Wherever I make my home is where my land is. Well, I think what made me think of it, kind of in terms of like uh, how the medicine's interrupting your personal life right now. You know where uh-huh. you can't trust the system that you live in. How I mean. I felt chased out. Once I got out and I stayed out, and I felt, eh, yeah, I got out. There was nothing enticing to return to at, after I was gone. And I started to wonder about, you know, people that, that are still there must feel, because America's uh, image over the last couple of years has gone to shit, in, in case you didn't know, in some places. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, you know, the interwebs have done a wonderful job of letting people see that just because the American government is one thing does not mean that the American people are necessarily that way or that you can't just because, I mean, you look at any different country, you interact with people in different countries and you realize that just because their government's a bunch of Captain Ass Holios, <laughs> or just because the people that you see on Twitter is a bunch of Captain Ass Holios, doesn't mean that they all are. <laughs> yeah. What do you so, think, Benny? Uh, mm-hmm. I've uh, I'm in paradise myself. Well, you're a lucky guy. But look, look at through all the traveling that you did do. I mean, can you understand why people would feel like I do about the situation? <laughs> let, let without me having to the, live it. Through let to me the ask bone. it like yeah. this, man. Let's right. say, uh, let's say you've gone out into the wilds of the Rockies and wanted to uh, uh, hike up and down and about. And, you know, there's there's plenty of dangers that you're gonna have possibility of encountering, from a bear to a precipice. Okay, and, so uh, what's the in, question? In, I would never do that in the first place. I'm in Denmark. How, how yeah, could I the, do the Rockies it, from this, Denmark? Okay, just consider this a possible hypothetical, right? Just hmm. imagine hmm. where you in there, out there, uh, hiking about, and had to get somewhere, and where was going somewhere, or just wanted to be there where he is at. These dangers exist, mm. whether it be in the wilds or in the city, as you uh, encompass about these people. Right? What, what are you going to do? A cop pulls you over, right? What are you going to do? Run? If you're in a car and you hit that car, you probably, you're probably you not going to live through the night, right? There's a lot of things that you don't want to do just stupid, right? If uh, 
What that's where, where, okay, whoa, whoa, see, that's what I mean. That's, that's where, that applies to where you are right now, not to where I are. The cops here well, are pretty would. much tame. They're, they're not aggressive assholes. There's so little t- for them to do. They don't go looking for shit just because they're bored. I've passed well, by them a, a, a dozen times over the last five years, but there's never any attempt to encounter me for anything. They just, doing something else and then you're just in their way get in, go on by so things happen man things well right happen. they change got, my yeah. point is my point is no matter where you are hmm. there's dangers you've got yes. to you've got to recognize dangers and learn, learn not to uh, fall off in the pitfall okay so well, what what am i missing people then? slip and fall in the bathtub at night <gasps> See, right. so see. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Let's ban bathtubs. No more bathing, people. Oh, it will be a very stinky world if we do that. Well, see, you know, I mean, those are the, some of the obvious is just beyond. I don't think about certain things anymore. I just they're just embedded in me. You know, yeah, like but uh, see, a lot something, of people don't realize that even common everyday things. Mm hmm can take your ass out. And if you sit there and fret and stew and worry about all of those things, then you're really not going to be living much of a life, are you? Well, I obviously so, haven't been because it took me five minutes to figure out what you guys were talking about. So, no. Oh, see? So, what I mean is, when I was in the lion's den, it didn't bother me. And now that I'm out of the lion's den, I can just see it differently. And I'll tell you, that thing I saw on the Internet yesterday about the shootout thing in Florida... That was the worst I've ever seen the police do. I, I've never seen anything like that. Hiding behind the fucking civilian's car while you're shooting at a fucking truck. It's like, wow, they hit a new level. Was there somebody the inside the car? Yeah, they were in traffic on the interstate. They had gotten around the truck. And there were cars in traffic in between the truck and the cops. And the cop well, was behind the freaking car with somebody driving it, shooting around the car or over the car at the truck. Using the yeah. car for, ah, oh, that was just, no, that was like something out of a fucking movie, man. Well, I can understand why you'd want to have cover, and, you know. I can't. Why the fuck can't people just take a license plate, let it run out of gas, and then swarm them? Why do they chase I mean, them through traffic run. and shoot live ammunition while people... People had nothing to do with any of it at the end. We're just there. Because. Because, because what? A, because a person that committed what they done did is apt to take out as many more people as possible between them having a full tank of gas and running out. What um, did they do? Who, how, how do many, you know? How do you know what they I'm did? I'm just going by the title. See, there you go. That's my problem with this whole thing fucking game that we play. You, you You're going presented by the title. this scenario, this guy, that shooter down there. I saw it right? on the internet with my eyes. I didn't look at it, but all I've seen Jeez. is the headlines and what you're headlines. saying. The so guy they... shot up some people, right? No. He was, uh... No. You're not so, talking about that sh- guy that... The uh, guy stole a UPS uh, truck or something. Saudi no, Arabia. he's talking what about the, the UPS driver. What part of oh. Florida is in U- Saudi Arabia, Vinny? Saudi Arabian. Well, I shit did a big mass shooting or something here a day or so ago. Oh, yeah, in Florida. Boy. That's what I Florida. Boy, this is the ultimate dork table. Three different yeah. subjects well, at one time. Mary Ellie's Florida it out. did have two different things going on. It had the the shooting was it a naval base? I was specific about yeah, that was, I was specific uh, about I didn't hear your specific so you, Well, there you go. Maybe you should listen just at occasionally just to see what's <laughs> going on with me. Well, but I don't anyway. know the situation then about what you're talking about, but uh, a UPS if if truck if gets I, stolen. I said even before you said that yeah. story, though, yeah. if you have stolen or if you're in a vehicle and if you, you hit it, yeah, you're you're going to expect shots to be fired. Wow. Now, are you serious? Right, this is yeah. how the world is. I'm not. What am I endorsing it? it this shit happens. So, I mean, yeah. you, you've got to start at that point. Where wow. you're at, you you can't you can't magically change nothing, right? So, why you got to let, let's not go without logic into the rhetoric? Why are these cops doing this? And then, what, where what do you do to change it? Right? Oh, you I, I read it. something earlier today about they were afraid that they would go out and shoot up more people, so they shot up a First, lot of people. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. What, so, so the guy, he shot somebody and then he stole the truck? No, it was two guys that that hijacked the UPS truck and, uh-huh. and the cops. Just, just from what I gathered, just quick little, the cops shot at the UPS truck, killing the two guys that were trying to hijack it and the UPS driver and one other person, I think. Cops killed the, the driver, too? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, because, See, you know, indiscriminate shooting yeah, can that's kill indiscriminate people. That's the point right there. So they're going to make a yeah. war zone a common thing so that you'll accept the police doing the shit that they're doing to people. Okay, well, and sounds good to me, what too. Is, Wish you luck. to get people desensitized to shit. You look at the progression of TV and movies mm-hmm. over the last 40 years, oh, yeah. and yeah. it has all been a progression of desensitizing people to yeah. the bullshit that's going on. Wow. Well, still, but even with our, you know, where we live, us three, we live out in places that aren't that populated. So we've got that edge where it's it's not overcrowded and people aren't acting stupid. But to see all that, and I didn't really... You know, if I was home back in the day, I would probably have paid any damn attention to it at all. Just another idiot acting up in public, my, not my problem. But being away from it and uh, away from violence completely for so long. It's been eight years. Well, see, no. I think a lot of this is a self-perpetuating bullshit. Hmm. I, I don't you know, know what because you mean. You have, you have people that, okay, you have cops that, obviously get a little carried away with their authorita shit. Understand and then, uh, then there's the ones that go real extreme, too. Yeah, exactly. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Now, you do have some that are really good people. I know some that oh, are yeah. really good people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Then, I then do, you, too. Yeah, then you have the ones that, I have a badge. I can do whatever I want to. Mm. And And then you have people that have watched things on YouTube about – how you resist being pulled over and yada, yada, yada. And when a cop pulls them over, even if they're just pulling them over to say, hey, you know, you got a taillight out. You want, might want to go get that fixed. <clears throat> you probably didn't know you had a taillight out. But if they pull you over and say, hey, you got a taillight out, you may need to get it fixed. But no, they can't <clears throat> say that because next thing you know, you got this person in the car going, I know my rights and I'm filming you. and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So you have someone coming up. Then you have aggression coming at them, so then they return with more aggression. Then it just escalates, and that's what's happening to the whole freaking country. And I think everybody needs to just stop, take a breath, and realize, learn to judge the situation that you're in. Are they coming at you being aggressive? You know, and and I know they are. And if they are, the best thing you need to do is freeze in place. Don't be threatening, and you don't want to get shot. Wow. And, you, might, you can be right and dead, right? Yeah, and try and try and neutralize the situation. If someone's yes. coming up at you all aggressive, try and see what the hell is causing this, number one. Try and neutralize the situation, and if you can't neutralize the situation, then it's a cover-your-ass-and-haul-ass kind of situation, if you can. But, you know, the, it's, it's like, you know, when I go to, and my girls are in, the big city right now they're in denver and the last time i was there with them they kept telling me don't make eye contact don't talk to people don't do this don't and it's like why why you guys are just feeding this whole fear of the other people thing make eye contact (laughs) say hi how are you doing hope you have a wonderful day Kind of neutralize the situation. Get it to where people aren't scared to make eye contact. Aren't scared to say, have a nice day. Hey, I let me. I've told this story before. I got a story here. The guy, Lucas Emerson, Sheriff, your uh, friend of mine, worked together building fence, poking cows. Anyways, I, I come upon him uh, down the road here, and he stopped. The school bus is there. So I get out and I say, hey, Lucas, I says, uh, you got your ticket book? He says, yeah. I said, you've got a taillight out. He said, I do? I didn't know. I huh. said, well, huh. I, I guess uh, we can go with a warning on this one then. <laughs> and see, I mean, it's, it's funny how it works. But if you go at it at a friend, in a friendly way, you do kind of. 
tone down the situation. <coughs> but so many people are, I know my rights. Okay, everybody knows. If you don't know your rights, shame on you. That is your own ignorance showing. Mm. Number yeah. one, you need to educate yourself. Yeah. But Amen. don't, don't no. be abusive and abrasive at people. Shouting yeah. at people just gets their hackles up. But it's a lot of fun. Yes. Now that's that's what people want to be entertained by. They want to uh, shout out their their anger and that they should be. Man, I don't know. It just hard to spit it out in the right kind of words. People want to assume that they are always have the the right to be as they will. They might have that right or think they do, but there's consequences. In the, oh, and yeah. That's in well, all things, in all, in, in all aspects of life, not just with, you know, cops. Yeah, see, and that's the thing. A lot of people just think, I have a right, and they think that that right magically makes it to where there are absolutely no consequences. There yeah. are always Consequences can be good or bad, but there's always consequences to everything you do or don't do. And Grimmy, yeah, they are always aggressive. Okay, when they are initiating a stop, all that yeah. yes, yeah. which is why my stomach always tightens up whenever I see a popo, let alone. And I know, like I said, I know a lot of them, and and they're not bad people. The, most of the ones that I know are not bad people. And yet, when I see a car coming at me that's got them little lights on it. First thing my stomach does is not up. First thing. Why is that? Because why, the popo why can is make our you. Why society trained like that? <clears throat> and we are trained <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah, because yeah, when, when uh, me and Circle talk about some of these things, her first response a lot of the time, and still after all these years, is, well, that would never happen here. And I look around me, and I lived in Copenhagen for eight solid months. So that's a good time to make an assessment. And the cops that I did see doing whatever the cops did, they were decent to the people they were still doing what they were doing to. It was mostly drunks and uh, shit, you know, shit like that. Not anything. They they didn't seem to have speed traps. or. Uh, but uh, I didn't drive, though. So, hmm. See, and I wonder if maybe that's the difference between being a law enforcement officer and a peacekeeper or a police officer. Yeah. You know, verbiage makes a big difference. Hmm. Well, I don't know if it's a special team that goes and raids Freetown or not, but if the same guys that are raiding Freetown are actually working in the streets of Copenhagen, then I'd be a little... Um, Knowing that one way or the other, I would have been a, would have shifted my trust of the cops a little, I think. But not knowing it, I didn't feel concerned. And I saw so I didn't really see any police activity the whole time I've been here, except for the couple of cops up at the grocery store over the years for maybe somebody shoplifting or something. But no violence, no not no chasing. Well, chasing really doesn't do a whole hell of a lot of good anyway. Oh, Except man. it just it just exacerbates the issue. Okay, well, you know, like I said, Phil, I feel because the laws have changed where I'm from so badly in my lifetime. Yeah. I I'm from LA. At LA, we, when you say LA now, it's an embarrassment. But in the day that I came from LA, people were like, "Oh, you're from LA? Wow, that's cool." And now it's like, "Oh, you're from LA? You poor thing." <laughs> it's 180, you know? Yeah. So, because of these big major things that you can physically see, I suppose, it it makes me feel chased out because I've got no desire to come back. My, my wife doesn't want to go to the States. Her family doesn't want her to go. So, it's not like I'm even from a place that's uh, comfortable to the people I live among. You know, yeah. Some of them will go there and visit, but they go, oh, I wouldn't want to live there, but I I like to visit America every now and again. But they don't want to stay there. You know what? I think uh, really this is the best place in the world to live. Why? Man, I can't imagine being any freer. How so? Well, freedom is, uh, okay, see, Vinny, that's that. You've got I, the space I to be never, free. I've never been prevented from doing anything or uh, 
beaten down for doing anything that uh, oh. that what needed to be well okay uh, needed yeah all right but still uh, see it's relative to your to the person there's no one but size fits all in this one Benny. everybody you know there's disagree. some terrible terrible places in this world right yeah uh well i don't know i've not been to them i've only <clears throat> read about them or i've had friends from them tell me I'd never want to go back to that place ever again, and you know, but it's only a few places. South uh, South Africa, I, I helped somebody out of a jam, and that was trying to get stay in England. When I when I told the story on the dark table before, but uh, I'm trying to think of another country where people were. No, that's pretty much the only where I've met people that spoke English well enough to converse with me about it. It's only South Africa where you they know, were I've, trying I've to told, escape. I've told you before, you know, I've been to places where people said, you ain't scared to be here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's been, I, I can call three, three times off the top of my head that it was a cop that come up to me and, and look at me like, what are you doing in this car? town in this part of the world right mm. what's the word i'm looking for is incredulity do it incredulity is that how you say it thank you yep. you're welcome did you i don't know I bet you can't say that three times holding your tongue oh that i, oh. I bet you're right i can't <laughs> say it once, even without <laughs> uh-oh well, yeah. and it seems like I, Mental didn't agree with the. Uh, I saw what I saw, and I'm telling you, what I saw was very depressing. That video of that chasing that damn UPS truck. Now, if that was staged, that was beyond anything uh, I've ever seen staged before, except 9/11. But 9/11 was so big, nobody believed that. You know, well, truth yeah, you lie. make the lie big enough. Yeah, basically, huh? Yeah. But who so, knows in this world what what they can do with computers and you know a few actors or some know. clones. Hey, I I have smoked uh, a joint in several places, even places that ain't uh, legal, and I almost got uh, caught up bad by the Greyhound uh, security guard. And I held that pot right in front of his face. Mm-hmm. And just and use the other hand. <clears throat> Nothing in here. What's that? I said. Electronics in went on. Yeah, that was a close call right there, boy. Because hmm. then he would have called the real police. Hmm. And, yeah, but hey, hmm. uh, I've uh, smoked the pot just right out wherever I'm at, hmm. all across this country. And you know, there is that chance that you might get the beat down for doing it. But, uh, but that's the best place in the world to live, right? That's what you're telling me. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. Well, hell, what a Maybe in Saudi Arabia they would, uh, uh, or Turkey, oh, maybe okay. they would chop your lips off yeah. or something. Okay, and in more. Portugal, drugs aren't even illegal. So what are you talking about? Where where yeah. you're at? I mean, hmm. well, so, I wouldn't want to be nowhere else. Well, that's you. Location, but you're insane. location, location. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Benny's insane, though. Yeah, but I go all across this country. It's not his fault, Mary. I, don't, I, I had no, I I had no fear. You got to know. And I encountered... It, and on purpose, go talk to God. And then really, in the very end, in the very end, it's, it's them that are making the excuse to leave. You know, you see that the turn, the body turns, the, and you know, it's like I'm turning to leave. You know how you're trying to exit. That's a that's one of them body languages things. Anyways, mm. <laughs> I, I I think we got a a, a duty to uh, to do it right first of all, but to do what our what duty. is it right. What does that it even mean? It is addressing the wrongs. To question oh. and and make, make it present it in question form hmm. and doing it kindly. Like uh, when I talk to a cop and ask him about this or that, but, you know, can I ask you why? Why Why would you want, why do you want to see my, and I said it in the video, IDD, uh, stuttering, you know, nervous. Yeah, talking to this cop. Uh, and there's almost a hundred thousand views. That's the, the highest thing I've got is uh, not showing an ID to a state trooper. And and really, I did give ID because I gave him my name. And then, and, uh, but then I did question him. What is there, is that the law? He says, yeah, basically, yeah, but it ain't the law. You know, stop stopping uh, 
uh, stop an ID, uh, they can do that uh, for, uh, what is that, loitering. If you're loitering, they can find out who you are, right? Because, hey, what are you doing around this business? If something uh, comes up missing, I'd like to know who you was to be able to see if you uh, might have been the person to do it type of thing. That'd be the logic on that, right? Uh, he didn't have – that's not a law that, uh, according to Arkansas, that I'm riding down the road to somebody and he can ask – well, he can ask me, like he said. I can ask you. You can tell him. But, well, hey, uh, whatever became of that neighbor of yours with the pink hair? They chased her the hell out or not? Who? Your neighbor that you were all concerned about about six months ago. With pink hair? Pink hair. The cops were harassing some little girl. Oh, yeah, 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 what, yeah. That was the story yeah. that you were making up yeah. or what? No, no, no. No, I know oh. what you're talking about. Now. Oh. Yeah. Well, what, I'm talking what, what about it. Well, whatever. You never brought it up. It, for months. Oh well, never heard a they fucking word to, about it. They, oh, yeah, they yeah. went up to uh, they work went up to uh, way up north there to work the sugar beet harvest. They got and chased they out. No, they no. went up yonder. Yeah, they worked at sugar beet harvest. Come back home, and then they went back east because their grandpa had died, oh. and now they got back here just a few days ago. So uh, oh. yeah, they're back here home on the mountain. Yeah, is that cop still harassing them? Well, not. They've been gone, so... Well, two days is back. enough time. Yeah, the cops know you're back. No. That's what the cops do. It's not that, there's not, like, you. no bolo issued about who comes in and out of the county or nothing like that. But the girl still got pink hair? Yeah. Everybody knows her, then. It's, it's, you can't it do look, these things. It depends small, on where you're at. I mean, yeah, yeah, you, you, you can go into town and you'd yeah. be more easily recognized. I said mm -hmm. easily. Uh, you know, but it's not like you're uh, like some spotlight out here. Just you were, yeah, you. but you were saying that they were picking on these two kids on purpose back no, in, during the summer. No, they're doing time. the profiling. I mean, that's yes, picking on, on the on, kids. That's, that's picking what on profiling on purpose. Is. But listen, oh. no, it's that is a standard operating procedure, right? For who? From the cops. That's what they do. Cops. Where you're at. Everywhere. Not where I'm at. Yeah, they looked at you. They just have better surveillance and uh, not letting you know that they're watching you, boy. They're watching you, boy. I'm telling you. Wow. You are so wow. you are so American. Man. Santa Claus is coming. See, I that's I don't have my American exceptionalism T-shirt anymore. So I. I've grown ah. beyond. Let me finish. I'll let you finish. So I, I've yeah. grown beyond that. I am the center of the world, and all the cameras are on my glory. <laughs> Look at me. Watch every move I do. The tr the reality the reality of what I got out of this whole thing is to be invisible and just meh, just go on with life. Nobody's watching me. Nobody cares that I'm here. It's just a a pleasant, it's like, a, it's almost like going to a, a friend's house and, you know, you go in, everybody's glad you're there. They say, hey, you just go on with your thing. No big, it's not a big thing. It's just a comfortable thing. So, and without all that intrusive um, enforcement, that's, it, out here, the enforcement is focused on people that are doing something fucking wrong. And first, you got to piss the bikers off before you're going to ever get to the cops. Uh, but you see, they have to have some kind of job security. True, but we and don't therefore, have... therefore, they have to give themselves more reasons to pull you over or intimidate or use enforcement. Right, right, but they borrow the cops from another city 20 kilometers or something away, about 20 miles away from there. They don't have standing, you know, the bikers pretty much handle all the shit that's to be handled, and then anything beyond a certain level goes to the police. And the police won't, They like, uh, I've heard so many stories in the bar. Oh, yeah, they called in because I was smoking a joint, you know, smoking a spliff, and the cops told them, take a picture Send it to us and we'll investigate it. <laughs> wow. Because it's not... The majority of Denmark wants prohibition to, to the cannabis ended. But they can't seem to get a vote for it. Big money from you know America. Well, yeah. War on drugs is huge. Huge money. I can only imagine what they spend on that shit here. 
And it doesn't do anything because everybody still gets shit from Freetown. So, and other places. It's a big, you know, it's bigger than that. The country's a little bigger than one place that's going to supply six million people. <laughs> you know, anyway. Well, anyway. half of that, anyhow. Over half of that. And then there's the people that don't say anything one way or the other. So, who knows? See, I, those, those quiet ones you got to watch out for. Is Goober listening? I, I, I can't know. open that. I don't even know what it is. Um, Stockholm cylinder. You know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not making it. Listen, I'm not making excuses and saying that it's they're right in doing that. Because mm. obviously they're not. I'm saying mm. that is the fact of reality uh, of what happens. And so it's best to. Uh, oh, to survive. Cause, cause yeah. Your, yeah, yeah. Cause your course. Yeah. Where you're not uh, running in, if possible. But there's some things that uh, need to be given statement to. So uh, <laughs> I, I smoke, I smoke weed right out there <laughs> on the street, right up on Front Street, Vegas, Denver. Oh man, all across the country, I, I ain't never worried about. Yeah, it. well, you and know I what, figure, Vinny, 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 don't don't ever uh, don't ever forget. There's a thing called do da dumbass luck. It's, it's dumbass luck. Dumbass luck. Because I've done I've done the same kind of reckless shit in other countries and in bigger cities, but if you there are places where man if you end up doing it there you're gonna be fucked and without you can't just know this you have to be told so the do die luck part comes in and you picked a place where it wasn't hot where it somebody did see you were going to go to jail as an example because there's still places that have that to this day yeah there's been uh several times through life well i say several there's been a, uh, some instances in where uh, a cop catch me with some weed and it's like he'd say give it to me or throw it you know dump it out now stomp on it type of stuff but hmm. then there is one that uh Mm, that smells like good stuff, and put it in his pocket, you know. Wow. I, wow. The, uh, I, I was like, okay, that's cool, because hey, beat the alternative. Yeah, you settle sometimes, right? No. Uh, well, you got to. You can't. Uh, no, I don't you got can't change to. Reality. Oh, yeah, you, uh, you, do. You, you You tell you me that, it. but listen, I'll tell you why. You what? take it or you don't. If you don't, what? What do you get? So, see, you're dictating what my reality is without I'm even not, knowing I'm, the answer. Just telling me no is your thing. I'm going to say no to Flash. He can't do that's that. That's okay. How, he, how, you tell me then. You tell me then. Explain to me by you won't accept that. Mm -hmm. What then? They can make you accept I'm it. I'm right? living it. Vincent, there you go. You see? put yourself no. in it. I, right. I don't. I took myself out of it. In fact... I was pushed out of it by other Americans, and I went along with it instead of fighting to stay where I was from. I went, fuck it, I'll stay here instead and do something different. I'll do something good for somebody instead of returning to my homeland and doing whatever I wanted to do. Yeah, so, but see, your, isn't your homeland wherever you are? I mean, aren't you at home where you're at? I've always been that way, but that's not the way that, that it's taught. You know, the way it's explained well, is way different than the way it's felt, I think. I think explaining it is a lot harder to do than than uh, we understand. But we try. Because <laughs> you're going to come up with one answer, and Vinny's going to have a different one, and I'm going to have one. And somewhere along the way, we agree about this, but then we disagree about that. So, I don't know. You tell you know, me, man. big tax. Big tact in this world is uh, if you don't like the uh, answers, change the question. <laughs> Good one, Ben. Uh uh. No, uh, I'll change. No, yeah. you change the question. On Call me. it. Dis Wait a minute. Did I? It's not distraction. It's not. <laughs> I'm just uh, smoking a pipe load on the dork table and being semi funny today. So hey, Woody, are you? Are you tuned in, man? You know yeah, what I told you I was going to do? And yeah, never he's did tuned it. in. It's, uh, do the, I, I, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mm. do what I said I was going to do. I need to do that. Uh -oh. And get you uh, yeah, networked up there with uh, uh, my cousin and a couple Ooh. other realtors. I know. 
Yeah, you yeah, should know, real estate. Yeah. The real estate thing. Yeah, I don't know how much good that'll do, but I mean, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's something anyways. And I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I mean, I'm so lazy, I tell you. Yeah, I had a good friend uh, in North Carolina going to real estate. And I think to this day, she's still in, in the uh, real estate business. Haven't talked to her in a few years, though. But when I did, her daughter was two years old sitting on my drum kit playing <laughs> i thought it was hysterical you know don't touch my shit and then i get some two-year-old sits down and i let her <laughs> it kind of well oh well i i guess i got a soft spot for kids don't tell anyone kids and animals yeah yeah well even the cattle said so we've got the old cat here and he sits to the left of me on this chair and <coughs> Sometimes when I'm doing the radio, I can get a little loud and raise my voice and do all kinds, and the cattle just lay there while I'm ranting. Doesn't even move. So. Hey, hmm. Sorry, I got a minute. Hold on. Whoa! Amy hey. is having a meltdown. So, what's up, Mary? Uh, how's your throat doing, dear? Are you any better now? Mm -hmm. I'm do Yeah, I'm doing okay so far. So. Okay. Yep. You got your key? Something. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Let me load up here. Anyway. So, have you ever had cattle? How do you mean? Or been around cows? You ever had a cow? Or... No, 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 no. I'm a city uh -huh. boy. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, yeah, I have been around cows, uh, but I got to tell you, the very first time I milked a cow, I was 23 years old. <laughs> oh, I was, wow. Uh, I, I was milking a cow since I was in grade school. Yeah. yeah. Well, the farmer oh, wow. grew up with cattle, so, mm -hmm. you know. And he said, we're not having cattle. And I said, I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, we can do chickens. We can do, but no. You're no. more in the uh, in the, the part of the world there where yeah. feedlots, I'd say, probably are a little more common than running. See, there's different uh, different uh, aspects of cattle where the market lies, you know, mm -hmm. from raising uh, cow-calf pairs and uh, whether you uh, – to selling the young ones, the yearlings, where they they then send them off to uh, the feedlot to fatten them up, and yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of grain up there, so I expect they probably uh, ship in on the uh, trailers of cattle up in there and, and pack them in the feedlots. Well, and the farmer hauls a lot of uh, bales and and stuff to um, someone that has certified whatever whatever Angus cattle, and. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, I mean, we know enough people that have cattle that, yeah, I'm not going to worry about trying to raise a cow. Right. But chickens, yeah, I would raise chickens so I can have eggs and chicken noodle soup. That's basically my two things from chickens. Mm -hmm. But other than that, yeah. And out here, especially where I live now, I mean, if you want to have critters here in this little two blinker, so long as you got a proper enclosure <laughs> bless you whoever that was it's cool but nine miles away and you can't do that mm. so yeah i prefer where i'm at hey so <coughs> did he either of you notice that the french are on fire and do you know why I I did. You told me here the other day. Yesterday, yeah. Well, they had a <laughs> they had a national strike because they want to raise retirement ages. And uh, so, so well, I, okay. Well, still, the the money's all fake anyway. We're all trillions of freaking dollars in debt to this imaginary entity, Mars or the planet Xenon or something. So we're all in debt, and we're all fighting for all this shit that doesn't exist. Why? How does I see? I've come to the age where it's just all bullshit. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you tell me. It's just it's all bullshit now. So when I saw these people actually in the street fighting over something they're obviously never going to get, it was almost disappointing to see them protest the way they protested. So I came up with an alternate protest protesters and i want to okay. i wanted to throw it good. at you guys here on the board I, table i think yet that we really really need something like that so good it's good. not going to be attractive and about nine out of ten people are telling me i'm an idiot 
But you ready for this? Ready as I'll ever be. If you're going to have a national strike, everybody, stop everything. Don't do anything. Don't go anywhere. Don't spend any money. Don't turn on electric appliances. Don't eat nothing. Just read a book. A couple oh, out. What? Well, I'm just saying that I told you it'll be called stupid. Uh-huh. But yeah. if you deprive this freaking monster that we fuel every day the way we do, if you starved it for 24 hours, the freaking stock market would crash. Can you imagine if Coca-Cola and Pepsi both didn't have any sales at the same time? Let, let me give you an example Boom. here. <laughs> what? I just did. The people, the people live as the uh, uh, just right on the verge of starvation. So oh. you get beat, you get mm. beat down, and you, you still got to come back uh, to the bowl for begging, right? That's the way the way it's been worked into through all the manipulation of the system that we live in in this occupation. Uh, there's most people, first of all, don't even have the fortitude to be able to uh, to do what you said. And then secondly, once you get to the point where you think, well, I got to feed my baby, you know, people are willing to uh, submit or even go to. Uh, extraordinary means to make sure that happens that's what grim was saying about stockholm syndrome is they're bound to that mentality they can't go without something it it's beyond my understanding I've, hmm. I've, I've been up to the sheriff's department up there in the uh the parking lot i talked to you, all them cops in and out used to be uh, real often when i was uh doing swamping for this old boy there's also a uh, 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 bail bondsman but anyways I, I would catch him out there and this was way before i mean this years and and talk to him about weed and just put it out there you know hey i, I for one smoke pot and i want to just know how you feel about it and stuff and you know what i get from most of them yeah uh you know shouldn't be illegal yeah you know, there's there's quite a few out here that, especially if they're not on the clock, you know, and you talk to them, they go, hey, I'm off the clock. I don't have to. When I'm on the clock, mm, that might be a different story. But right now, and I just tell them, well, you know, when you're on the clock, maybe you ought to help try and change some of this shit you're supposed to be enforcing, especially if you know that what you're enforcing yes. is not moral, is not right. And I would call yeah. this part of the show the do's and don'ts of living on synthetics. Thank you. Ah. Because the natural stuff, you should know where I'm coming from on this, Mary. Because the yep. natural stuff is shunned by the society, and all the synthetic shit is shoved down your freaking throat and forced on you at gunpoint. If you don't follow along, they make you look bad is every opportunity they can. Well, they either make you look bad or they put you in a little cage. They're that too. Well, that is the status dream is to imprison another man for not agreeing with him. I mean, well, wow. but a, a lot of people don't realize they're already living in a cage. <laughs> it's just that the cage is inside their mind. And then if, if your little cage tends to bump up against someone else's little cage, then somebody somewhere is going to say, you ought to go to jail. So they take you out of, well, you stay inside the one cage that's inside your mind, but then they put you in another real one. You know, one that's got tangible that you can rattle the walls with and everything, Mm -hmm. which I always thought rattling the walls would be a lot more fun if you were in bed and it was a headboard rattling, but that's just me. So I um, yeah I came I came to the decision that then being as I I accept that you know society is not a state of freedom in my opinion it's a state of compliance to yeah. you know if you if you want to get along easier in society there are things you must comply with so there you go so you sell your soul for the you know so that you don't have to live a, a struggling life on a mountaintop alone fighting a bear for a rabbit to wipe your ass. Because that, yeah, that's it's, the alternative. Yeah, it's all about making compromises. Right. The problem is, hmm. so many people, you know, the compromises that they're making are not 
free will compromises. They are compromises that they make in order to stay out of that cage rabbit. Yeah, yeah, bargaining with the devil. Yeah, I understand that. But, uh, well. Okay, I'm going to mute hmm. myself for a sec. Oh, uh, okay, you got a problem. And Miss Mary is getting over a little problem in her nose. Anyway, Vinny, you still hanging in? I guess, I guess. What do you think about the difference between the natural shit and the synthetic shit? What do you got to say about all that? Well, it's the, uh, how would I, how would I have called it something before? The God factor of man, in a sense. It's the, uh, that search for the God particle that, uh, man wants to, to, uh, recreate, wants to live together forever. It's these, yeah. These people that are in the uh, helms of uh, leading this this uh, assault, this occupation, this uh, of death and destruction against the whole world, everything included, kill it, kill it, kill it, right? Mm -hmm. This is that society that uh, has been built. Now, when a when this guy decides to become a cop, right, and he's had. Uh, his ideas and, and notions and morale and this and that, uh, what's right and wrong. And then let's say, well, hell, you smoke weed all the time. But then he become a cop and they say, the rules are you can smoke marijuana and you have to arrest people that do. Well, he's like, you know, I, I'm here because I want to do good. And that's why I want to be a cop. I want to, you know. Uphold the law and protect folks. But then you got these rules. Remember talking about rules? There's, there's good rules, right? Mm -hmm. But there's rules that are tricked up in there that they're not good. But then they think because of the society and the system and how it all is, well, you got to. Okay, right? so you're saying that we're using synthetic words? Even so, wow. Since because the the point of the question was more I was playing off of the do's and don'ts, but I was saying living on synthetics, and then you went right to the verbal side of the synthetics, the legal thing, because it's all made up bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And, it, yeah, and, it's, and it's adjustable up. to fit the fucking crime you're committing at the time. And folks do not want to admit they've been had, and they put up with this fucking amnesty court in their face every goddamn day. <laughs> yeah, how come? Yeah, Grabner, I, I I know a guy personally here is a, a Mennonite, and you know, used to you get away with saying, you know, using this stuff about driving down the road and there's a traveler and this and that, but uh, it's hard hard to uh, get past that now. It, and then they uh, uh, equate that the law enforcement. It's been, I mean, there's special training and stuff that apply to this on this called so-called Soviet citizen. And and that's the way if they encounter somebody that's trying to say hey, I don't have to have a driver's license so forth. Um, there's manipulation here here in a local level uh, law enforcement. The feds are are deeply deeply entrenched. My friend Lucas, uh, what where I would have a problem with him is uh, that compliance. But then again, see this has been rolled in slowly into the county levels all across this country it's not uh, yeah the feds have uh, usurped true law and that over the, as the sheriff being the uh, the top law enforcement the top power i mean nobody can even arrest the sheriff except for the coroner by law by law the sheriff is the highest elected official yeah. Legal Ooh. when it comes to law enforcement. Yes. You would know that, too, for sure. But they, they submit their authority over to the uh, federal level, which is yeah. just a big, big problem. Hmm. Big, big problem. They fail well, their, their constitutional duty then. Well, and it's part duty. of that is because of the way the educational system has worked. you you got to give yes. these people props to, because, I mean, you don't have to like it, but you got to give them good. props because I tell you what. That long-range plan of theirs is really doing well. I mean, brilliant, it, yeah. Yeah, Executed. it was brilliant. They are freaking evil geniuses, and they yeah. are patient. And the you know, public. Like that video that I shared earlier today that, uh, what was it? This was this was done in 1967. Yeah. Seriously, and, and I'll pull it up and, and repost it. 
y'all need to listen to that because mm-hmm. long range plans, and they knew it was not going to happen in their lifetime. Those that started this crap, but they were stubborn and they were patient and they stuck with it. Okay, I put the link in the notes as well for you, Miss Mary. It's oh, thank underneath you. the do's and don'ts of living on synthetic. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and you know they they did a wonderful job because what you got to do is you got to get the education system, you you get a hold of the money, you get into the education system, and you get into the press, and you uh, pretty much can t- take over a society. You know how many times on the dark table I have complained about Ronald Reagan snatching up the the education system? Did you know I was wrong? I found out. I saw new information about it. Wasn't that Nixon that no, did was, that? No, it was Jimmy Carter. Oh. But he did it before uh, the inauguration, before the turnover to the next president. Reagan was after Carter. So, oh. because it was all done before Reagan went in, but Reagan was sitting in the chair when it was physically done. Because, ah, you know, government, hey, you do it on paper first. I, I the interrupt the, this program with the following announcement. Mm-hmm. From reallibertymedia.com, the Freakers Ball Podcast, 2019-12 of 06 is hashtag with the VPN, Children's Book of Demons, mm-hmm. Pig Monkey Chimeras, Mushrooms, and more. The uh, you know, It's up on the YouTube, so you'll be able to find it on the Real Liberty Media homepage also. Uh, bit shoot. It is bank there. It'll be there pretty quick. Bada bing, bada boom. Wow. Yeah. And then I got one more to go find. Oops. I See, I'm never, I'm never going to get popular because I always bash all the big people that carry the show that I do. Because I think the big people are a bunch of, they're a bunch of drips. I don't, I don't like big people. I like small people. <laughs> okay, I'm putting something in, uh, in the chat that <laughs> is in reference to what Grimmy said a little bit ago uh, about weed was just one small sample or example. Yeah, you know, license yeah. plates, permits to do everything. And the, the great way that they hide a tax is by calling it a fee. Mm. I mean, it's the same yeah. amount of letters. Uh, yeah. Ooh, right. it, it's just a fee as opposed to a tax. Very different. Because oh, fee geez. is not quite as ugly a sounding word. <laughs> is that what it is? Uh, well, <laughs> apparently, I well, don't know. Well, because if you said a tax, could be going to beat somebody's ass. Or if you said yeah. a tax, it could be I'm going to add 20% to your bill because I don't like the way you look. You're going to pay the ugly fuck tax. What do you think of that, sport? What are you going to do? Yeah. Argue? They got guns. These people have guns. They will come to you and ruin you. They've done it over and over and over. And they're going to continue to do it. So, hmm. And, you know, I always find Yuck. it rather obnoxious and a little disingenuous to to have people coming up to me with guns telling me that I need to turn over my guns. <laughs> it's insane, isn't it? Yeah, hmm. just we've been on the hypocritical side. Yeah. But, uh, well, see, yeah. the, way, the way that America gets their information from other countries is very, uh, it's directed, okay? Because I've lived in Scotland, I've lived in England, and I've lived in Denmark. And over the time that I lived there, these are places where guns are supposedly not a, a legal matter. Well, then why do I always find these people that have guns? I, uh, hey. Hello? Talking hey. about the title, Flea. No, no, no. no. Flea. I was talking about guns. I, yeah, I'm jumping out here. I, I uh, just wanted to exit with, uh, what did you say it was? Flea? Flea. Flea, flea you fool. Yeah, I said flea. To flee or not to flee should not I'm be fleeing. should not be the question. Oh, you're leaving? Hasta las yeah, Legos there. One, no, one hour. And hey, there's hey, thanks the... Thanks uh, for showing up, this, mister. Thanks, man. There's the second part of the promo <laughs> out there. Yes. Uh, yeah, tell YouTube to get bit. Shoot. Yeah, that's where you want to be listening. <laughs> if you're, there you go. If you're hearing this downstream, listen. If you're on YouTube, 
hit the stop button right now. Mm. Look down, go down in the link descriptions down there and find out. I think Grimner puts that in there, that YouTube. Do you? Uh, for for BitChute? If not, just go over on to BitChute. If you don't have, if you're not there already. Uh, oh, yeah, Mr. Or. Already yeah. So, then he's doing his do thing it. all over it. Do it. Do yep. it real. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Mary. Um, and Flashers, you guys are pretty good talkers. See you later, my friend. <laughs> Yes. See you later, Vinny. Don't have too much fun out in the out in the yonder. You don't I, have to go gonna, home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> well, I'm going to the get on lazy port here of the, the day and uh, go so back you, into. That's what you keep my saying. Projects. I'm doing it. I'm going to. I'm going to put my pants on. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, this is like a on. fucking Rocky episode here going on. Uh, Rocky Fifty Seven. Uh, Rocky takes on Delaware. Ugh. Okay. Listen, I, I'm not telling you what to do, <laughs> but when you do what you do, you better think about it before you do it, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Bye-bye, y'all. <laughs> right, you you me wow. What a, what a crazy boy. Anyway. Yes, he is, but so. that's Vinny. You gotta love him. But he come up with words for this my synthetic question. What did you come up with? Should I ask it again? To yes, you should ask it again because I, when I muted, I actually took my headphones off, so I could step away and honk the horn. <laughs> yes. So. Okay. Well, my question was, Miss Mary, it's regarding the do's and don'ts of living on synthetics. How does that hit you? It hit Vinny with verbs. Um, well, you know what? What a lot of people don't realize is this world is pretty much made up of synthetics. <laughs> it is now. Whether it's, yeah. <laughs> whether it's synthetic yeah. information yeah. or synthetic food or synthetic clothing or synth whatever, the world is pretty much made up. And thanks to all this geoengineering, the – Outside, the outdoors is becoming synthesized as well. Yeah. But, um, I, yeah. mm, you know, I there's so many people that, that that bitch and complain and whatever, whatever. And and I think just go out there and try and do something to make it not so synthetic. You know, try and make your life a little bit more real. Very Try difficult. and be a little bit more real. But it's Try and difficult. eat a little bit more real. Still very difficult. Yes, it is difficult, but you know, anything that's worthwhile sometimes takes some work. Well, why does the U.S. government fight against labeling shit so you know what you're buying? Which is my first question, since we was leaving the States after all that, when I went to Scotland, that I even started to give a flying shit about what I was eating to keep me alive because I had no plans to stay alive this long. That's just a byproduct of living. But then I started to get older, and I slowed down to do some uh, things in Scotland. And I had to be more aware of myself so that I could do the things for my mom. You know, Otherwise, my being there would have just been a burden. So I found the Internet, and it guided me through these ideas. It got me off of the high blood pressure medicine. Um, I got that idea off the Internet. Just fuck it. Go off. Stop using it. Because yeah. when I found out what the shit does to the other part of me that wasn't sick, I went, hey, I ain't doing this crap. So I stopped. But then if I would have told people in that in the States, if I'd have done that back in the States, I would have ended up in a big fucking argument and hoopla over doing that. Messed up everything. You know? Do you, going against the doctor's wishes or whatever, you can create quite a disturbance. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And, man, they go on instant attack mode. Let me tell you, because I've been to several appointments. <laughs> with my mom. Yeah, instant attack mode. So, you know, I, yeah. And it's it's all, you know, it's just like medicine is all synthesized and synthetic. And why is that? Because doctors, you know, have been taught, there's that educational system again, that you should trust Big Pharma. They know what's best. Well, who writes the freaking medical school books to start with? 
<laughs> it's called job security, peeps. Mary, you know, it's and, and then when medicine does nothing but treat symptoms, they don't look for the root cause, and that's one of the things that we've found out with my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been treating her symptoms mm -hmm. for two years. Yeah. Finally, found out. Wait a minute here. She has an abnormal growth. That's what's causing all of this. But are they going to take her off the medications to treat the symptoms? Oh hell no! Can't do that. Now you're so. starting. To Sound like a Rocky Horror Picture show. I know. You know that all, that that information is in that movie, performed oh, yeah. by a guy in drag, so that nobody would take it seriously or believe it, and just be a a form of passing amusement, so they could bury it. I'm telling you, that I've been arguing with uh, Vinny for weeks about this idea that I've got. Uh, people say, oh, the people in the past had such a hard life. And, oh, how they suffered and worked this, that. And the okay. And I say that their food sources were better. Their information was way better. They had way less intrusion into their life from outside, like electricity and uh, poison water, poison food sources. And, and then, you know, Vinny, well, well, shit happened. Oh, yeah, but it wasn't on purpose, you know. Life has a certain amount of balance to it. You know, there's pitfalls and there's times where things don't go wrong and shit's going your way. It's called balance. Yeah, well, you know, and there are there are inherent dangers in just about everything. True, but my argument was that the the food sources were fed hemp on top of everything else. Why do you think hemp was made against the freaking law so they could starve the fucking human body of it? What we used to do is eat it through the animals, too, on top of whatever else. Oh, well, yeah. Well, there you yeah. go. And, not, and he goes, and not everybody. Well, no, of course not everybody. But people that yeah, had what hemp What people don't used realize is, is you have CBD receptors and THC receptors in your brain for a reason. Those didn't just show up there magically. They, they weren't are, implanted they by Monsanto. There. Yeah. No. Yeah. I know. I mean, uh, they, they've been there for, and I don't, I really don't know that people really, I mean, yeah, in the last hundred years or so, people probably had it rough, but I'm to the point now hmm. where I don't believe that back in caveman days, there was such a critter as back in caveman oh, days. It doesn't make any sense. You got plumbing issues. Have you ever, okay, have you ever studied about the castles, the old famous castles that they abandoned over history? Do you know what uh -huh. the cause, the one common cause of abandoning the castle was? What was that? Their um, septic problem. They ran out of room to get rid of the waste, so they ended up abandoning the land instead of because there was no design at that time for them to, to do anything with it. They were just, it would just accumulate and then overwhelm them, and they'd have to move. So they didn't have someone come along and pump their septic tank. They didn't, yeah, they didn't yeah. do it in that fashion in certain periods yeah. of history. That came along with progress, right? Okay, yeah. well, you know, progress has both got a good and a bad side to it. Did you, did you notice that, or is that just me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like technology can be used for good or ill. But information can be delivered to you at a rate of bullshit that your mind is not capable of getting at the time it happens. You know, that's why so many people saw the moon landing on the TV and went, oh, yeah, he landed on the moon, all right. No, they didn't. Uh, well, what's wrong with you? Are you stupid, son? I just saw that on the TV. See? Yeah. Okay, well... well Nowadays, it's I saw it on the internet, so it must be true. Okay, well, maybe that's maybe that's the saying, but no matter how you slice it, whenever I say out loud that I have that little doubt that we're on us flying rocks spinning through space and all this shit that I've been told, and then they go, "Well, then you must be a flat earther," and they go, "Well, that some of that makes sense, some of it don't." Then what is it? You see, you can't be just baffled and confused and alive and happy with that. You have to pick a side so that people can accept you in their, you know, mental group that they're in so that you can be a peer. And fuck you. I'm so tired of that. You know what I mean, Miss Mary? 
Yeah, it's one of those things where you call into question something that everybody says, but this is the truth. Yeah. And you you question it, and automatically you get labeled as this other. Yeah. It's like and the that vaccine. It doesn't thing. mean that you're yeah. other. It just means that I'm questioning that right there. Just show me some physical proof. You know, it'd be just like with the vaccine thing. I've got personal experience in that with uh, family years ago. So I know. I saw it with my own eyes. They described it as something else, so I didn't understand what I was seeing at the time. Now, hindsight, whoa, they poisoned that fucking ch child to death, two months old, with all their damn inoculations and shit. But I wasn't a parental person. I was just an outsider watching it. And not yeah. a word I could say to anybody about nothing. It was very sad, to say the least. But medical, man. they've got people just hypnotized by this. They're so authoritarian, and if you say anything against them, you're a nut job, and you need protection from yourself because what? <laughs> it's Yeah, it's white coat syndrome. And a lot of people say that white coat syndrome is, you know, when you go into the doctor and they go to take your blood pressure, your blood pressure is automatically elevated because you're nervous. Well, mm. That is a part of white coat syndrome, and that, that's a symptom of white coat syndrome. Yeah. But I see white coat syndrome as the belief that doctors are God Almighty. And most of it is done by the doctors themselves. They believe their own bullshit. I know what's best because I went to school. Well, you know what? I read the same damn papers, and I came to a different conclusion. Yeah. And with my body, I think you're full of shit. But, you know, it's it's that whole white coat syndrome of you must believe them because they have a white coat. They have a special uniform, a are, special are costume, you accusing them if of, you will. But are you accusing them of being synthetic? Yes. Mm. So are no, you... I'm not saying all of them are because there are good doctors out there. Well, wait a minute. There are how, good doctors, how can a, but... How can you have bad information and be a good anything if you got fucked up bad information to work with and your final result you fucked up bad information and then you start questioning that oh, bad information and start looking for they end up dead Mary. either confirmation of the bad information or reputing the bad information mm -hmm. but either way you start quest you know once you start questioning that bad information and start looking for real answers mm -hmm. then you get good information from bad mm -hmm. You know, it's like when you when you stub your toe on something, you can sit there and bitch all day long or for several days about how you stubbed your toe, or you can move whatever you stubbed your toe on mm. so that you don't do it again. Yeah. So <sighs> that's the way I see it. I know mm. it's rather simplistic, but that's the best way to be. I mean, it's same as how I see the political party thing. It's one party split in two, red side and the blue side, same team. What? Yeah. Well, they're called you United States, dumbass. You so, take red and blue and you mix them together and you get purple. But when purple. when when you've got a society based on people arguing about who's in control of the other half, that's nah, that's not what that's not what I was raised in. So I can't adapt to the changes that took place. So. Fortune, yeah, I got out of it. But for people that are in it, like Vinny says he loves it there. Oh, wow. But, you know, don't have the freedom to do the things that you really want to do without threat of, you know, prison or something. Some kind of enforcement yeah. upon you. I don't feel I'm living in that. I just think that the majority of the people in the country are uh, against the prohibition. But it didn't say that the majority of the country are for you flaunting it in the street like a you know a circus performer. So you know I don't participate in it that way. And there's a few. There's not a lot of people that openly smoke, but the ones that do, they don't hide it at all. I've seen yeah. I've seen people rolling of all ages too, young and older, and I've seen them rolling a spliff at the train station on the side right there in front of everybody. If you're paying attention, you'd notice, but uh, not attracting a big thing, but just doing it like a no big thing. 
So instead of the society I'm in making a big hoopla out of this crap, they just, yeah, fuck, it's a spliff, leave it alone. Well, see, and if you don't make a big hoopla about something, mm. then most people will just ignore it and move along. It's when you start making a big hoopla that people start going, what, what, mm. what, and then they start picking sides. Because, well, you know, people can't yeah. just say, they got to pick a side. They can pick here. I'm, there's, a, a, there's a small group of guys and women, but mostly they're, in the, they're the guys. And then there's a few straggler women that drink with them. And they sit outside of the kiosk. And it's in the back of it because the train, it's on the other side. But everybody can see, you know, they're just a group of guys. And whatever they talk about, there's never anybody punching the other guy in the face or yelling and screaming and arguing. You know, and they come and they bring their dogs and the dogs lay around while they sit there and drink and converse about whatever. And people get along fine. And then here it is, and it's against the law in any normal place. But there's no police here. So I guess the the public, as long as nothing goes wrong, there's no problem. But Cirque says it's not against the law to drink outside in the first place. So there's no written crap about it. But even without the written crap, the, these guys just get along with each other. It's It's really fun to... It's fun to see that on a normal, regular thing. You know? The lack of violence in life. Yeah. Well, it's changed Lack me. of violence, Come lack on. of force. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm so... I, compared to how I felt in Copenhagen about society, I'm so calm here. I'm thinking of going up to the bar tonight after the show and go have two or three beers with a friend of mine. But... Never know. I'm kind of moody. I might get off the radio and say, "Nah, I don't want to go." But I've been I've been invited. And when uh, the last time I when I took Cirque down there to have a beer for my birthday, my buddy showed up to that. So I think you know to be decent, you know, he's asked me, so I'm going to do what the right thing. But I'm kind of moody, and sometimes I say I'll go, and I don't go. Well. People are very forgiving of me for that because, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm finally old enough to, uh, they don't question, you know, well, you dumped this off to go do something way more important. Yeah, Cirque, Cirque, they know Cirque, so it's like, a, yeah. well, yeah, on the radio, I'm one person, and then I've got my physical real life where people know each other, and as little interaction as there's been, it's uh very comfortable, uh, friendly place. You know, people basically get along. And the oddball is the one that wants to fight and you know, be an idiot. Yeah. That's the weirdo. Not you know, not the guy that wants to shake your hand or give you a hug or any of that weirdo shit. There's plenty of them. I'm telling you, they're very lovey-dovey people. And I'm not a very lovey-dovey guy in the first place, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, go figure. I'm shocked. Yeah. Uh, I'm, <laughs> it surprises everybody. They look at me and they go, oh, geez. The quills should have been a dead giveaway. <laughs> yeah. But, something, yeah. Something about being all prickly. So this synthetic thing, does it bother you or have you accepted it as a norm? Or are you still digging for all those sneaky ways to get around it and beat it? Um, I have not accepted it as norm, mm. but, you know, it is one of those things that you need to acknowledge that mm. it's there. Yeah, There's yeah, entirely yeah, too yeah. many people out there that go, what, what, what? <laughs> yeah. So acknowledge that there is a problem yeah. and then do what works best for you to deal with that problem. And when you w do what works best for you to deal with that problem, don't go bitching at someone else because you're dealing with that problem isn't fixing that problem. You know, it's you made the decision. This is how you wish to deal with it. Ta -da. That's your choice. Yeah. Yes. Da, wow. Da, da, da. So there you go. Wow. And yeah, yeah. And we, but the good thing about it is most people just type shit on a computer or they say something. They don't go out with guns and shoot anyone over any of this crap that we're talking about. 
See, and that's where I think the computer has really done a disservice is that there's so many people that, that just flat ass they say whatever they damn well please on the computer. Mm. But when you meet them face to face, it's like, oh, yeah. Uh, uh. And when they get oh, to, yeah. they've, they've mm. learned that they can just say whatever they damn well please on the Internet. And mm. then, you know, like the Antifa people, they think, well, I can do that in the real world, too. Not realizing that in the real world, there are instant in your face repercussions. Mm. Now, on on the interwebs, oh, you might get blocked for a day or you might get banned or your account taken away or whatever, whatever, which whine about that somewhere else. But in the real world, when you get in someone's face and you start raising all kind of shit with them and they look at you and go, no, and yet you stay in their face and they get a little bit more uh, forceful with their no, as in the hand gets involved and they really get in your face, and then you call bullshit and you call foul, and it's like, what did you expect? What did you? But expect? what what becomes of the words though? People don't change their minds, and then it, we no. end up getting mad at each other about something that doesn't exist because you're talking about something that happened to somebody else in the first place. <laughs> it's so, you know, level level on top of level of just bullshit and it's so hard to to make it sensible and not seem strange that that the normal is the weird and the shit that you think is weird is really the normal <laughs> we're just yeah, kind of crazy we're lied to about every fucking thing and yeah so much exaggeration you know cert got introduced to henry lee lucas today on the tv show I knew about well she says she knew about it but the show was really, it was complete. They told the whole story. I mean, all the all the different reports about the guy totaled so much ridiculousness. 600 dead, 150 dead. You know, it, from reporter to reporter, it was different. Okay. Okay, now, which show is this? Henry, oh, well, it's a guy that was, uh, he was claiming to be a serial killer back in the, I forget what years in seventies I think, and yeah, and he had convinced the the public and the press that he was uh, up to six hundred bodies. <laughs> oh, Henry oh. Lee Lucas, yeah. Anyway, I didn't know she'd seen it before, but it was a really complete and it did the whole explain. He ran around with this other serial killer guy. <laughs> it was funny, and the end, it's like wow. <laughs> He fooled the police because the police were fueling him to fool. They were so crazy to get these cases closed. They were taking the word of a guy that's claiming to be a serial killer. <laughs> well, how many boxes of post toasties did he take out? That's he, what I want to know. He was repeating the information the cops had right back at him. That's all. He could, yeah. He had that. You could see a picture and figure it out. You knew how to, to say it, so it sounded like he'd been there. <laughs> ah. So, okay. See? The difference between proving something and saying something is saying something. It's hard to prove that it didn't happen. But it's harder proven that you did something you didn't do. But you can convince people but with words for a period of time, but eventually... The words will lead to the truth in the end. And usually by that point, what the TV proved is it's usually too late because people that had been convinced years ago that their their loved one was murdered by this guy, but he they were there he wasn't the killer. <laughs> so but they went, Well, he did it. <laughs> no, then we proved he didn't. Well, yeah he did. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. See, that's and that's how we are. We're we if we're I guess initiated into that controlled kind of belief system that makes people behave that way. That's what the system's looking for, I man. That is exactly the model that they need to get the vote that they want <laughs> to keep the game going. Cuz you'll go put a red or a blue hat on 
and the other people won't. <laughs> the scared ones do. Yeah. Remember, <clears throat> remember when you were scared of it. Now you're not. Yeah. How do you explain that? Being as you've been through the fear part, because I grew out of my fear of the system uh, as a young twenties, early twenties, yeah, twenty, middle twenties, in there, and then was completely convinced of it's all bullshit by twenty eight. But I didn't, you know, I didn't go on and do all these great things in life people had expected from me at, when I was younger. Because the way I come out looking at the society was like, I don't want to be a part of that shit. You can have it. Yeah. Yeah. It. Mm. Well, I, I lost a lot of family and friends over that stand in line. Right. And I, I guess if you looked at the circumstances of how things are today, it's like, uh, like some form of a compromise. And I don't think so. You know, I've thought about that because I don't like to c consider myself somebody that compromises and deals with you. I don't. And yet we do every day. In, we make little compromises okay, every day. But those those uh, invisible, where you're not making a mental stretch to do something. Some things just happen without your... Yeah. Well, yeah, but you still got to take a you know mental action to do shit, but it's just not as bad as other things. Yeah, you know? some things are harder to do than some things, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. You ever find yourself around somebody in person that you're not comfortable being around? Oh yeah. Do Do you realize that they they might not even notice? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because most of those people really, they don't notice the vibe that they're putting out. And they don't even know you're there in the first place. Not at the level that I'm talking about, anyway. You're just yeah. the obstacle between them and the toilet. But outside of that, you're not really there. They don't see you. They don't hear you. And there's a lot of that kind of uh, behavior, I would say. How, how would you explain that? Because... It's not something somebody's saying out loud. It's just the way you feel about their presence. And I think the societies have killed a lot of us. And we're just wandering around out there brain dead. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of like in that video. When did they start flora, uh, fluoridating the water? Wow. Yeah, well, we've always got that. Plus the food. That's what, see, that's what I mean. I go back to the... If the old days were so hard and harsh and people had such a hard life, well, they were eating good fucking food and shit. You know? Wow. And there were no laws putting pesticides on their vegetables. and You know, they were, they were getting good stuff. So... Yeah. Well, okay, they couldn't, they couldn't play progress up to the idiots they play it up to. If they told you how wonderful the past was, they got to make the past look... See how fucked up the past was? You don't want to live like that. You want to live like George fucking Jetson. Zipping around in your spaceship. And they sold this crap to millions and millions of people. It's sad. And you know what? That's not necessarily a bad sale. Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah. You know, making things better for people, making it easier to prepare your meals or whatever. Hmm. Or doing laundry yeah. is not a bad thing. It's what it was. What came in along with it? Oh, the you planned know, obsolescence. You maybe you had some people that they took that good thing, yeah, and they started steering it just a little bit at a time. Well, like what? You know? Wait, pick something and use that as an example. Because I okay, know what you're so saying, you, but so yeah. you got this, you know, packaged food, and okay, I've got some cookbooks here. That are uh, well. The last copyright on them was 1969 mm -hmm. on on these cookbooks that I have, and in, a, in the one of the recipes that I've used, it says you can now buy canned applesauce, which I chuckled about. But then I thought, well, you know, that would be a big thing back then, being able to purchase canned applesauce, so you don't have to go and get the apples and make your own applesauce, and or now you can go out and purchase it from someone. 
Okay, that's all well and good. You've got this lovely little innovation and this way for people to make things a little bit easier. And then they started sneaking in, you know, like the the glyphosate and then genetically modifying crops to be able to tolerate this herbicide or creating a Franken crop that can now tolerate a poison. And they're telling people, oh, that doesn't get passed on into the food system. That's not going to affect you adversely at all. But then, you know, they start, they're doing that, and then they start sneaking corn, whether it's uh, corn meal or corn syrup or what have you, into all of these different prepackaged foods. And so what started out as a, wow, this is cool, I can go to the store and buy this instead of having to go and get a bunch of apples and make my own applesauce. Now they're sneaking this shit into it because, yeah, you look at applesauce and you'll find corn syrup in there. Not all of them, but you'll find it in there. And it's it's that slow, steady progression hmm. of taking something that was a good thing and turning it into a bad thing. Hmm. And that's what they do. That's what they do. They take progress, they take a good thing, and they slowly steer it to where it's only a good thing for a certain few. Well, because they can make money yeah, off of and, it and the way while that, killing off a lot of people. And the way that I understand this is if something creates a waste, it's usually a synthetic. The bigger the waste it creates, more profits can be made off it. Yeah, because they try and find a way to use that waste. Yeah. In a sellable way, there you go. so that they can make pro- they can make a profit off of both ends, or in some cases, off of multiple ends. Mm-hmm. Well, Miss Mary, and, and the last thing I had on my mind for the dark table this week is, if the bankers don't kill you, the medicine will. What's your take on all that? Well, look at who started modern medicine. If you really dig back yeah. and look, no. yeah. John D. Rockefeller is considered one of the not well known, but he is considered one of the fathers of modern medicine. Hmm. And he started out as a snake oil salesman. Hmm. But with his family connections and with and uh, it wasn't just him. I mean, it was the Rothschilds and the the Carnegies and. And then you get um, the Morgans and the Chases, and you start getting all of these money people that start backing someone that comes up with this scheme to take something that everybody trusts and be able to make money off of it and then say, well, you know, now that we've got them trusting us, you know, same with the corn syrup and the applesauce, now that we've got them trusting us, not only can we take it to the bank that we own but we can also create repeat customers because we own parts of each and every asset or aspect of this whole conglomeration that we've created because they own parts of the medical school. They own parts of Big Pharma. They own parts of uh, the food system that what people eat this food and then they have to go to doctors and then the doctors give them prescription medications to deal with the symptoms of what they're dealing with from the food. So it's a self-perpetuating monster is what it is. You know how crazy that sounds to normal, average Joe, nine to five people, Mary? Yeah, I know how crazy it sounds. I take a lot of criticism on minds, right? For, For example, for somebody, in my opinion, they look at a link. Maybe they'll see the title and they'll just jump to the conclusion. And their conclusion isn't necessarily wrong, but it's it's incomplete, you know? Yeah. So their immediate dislike of something that you found uh, parallel brings out some kind of uh, anger from opposition. Now, when I'm an opposing somebody's opinion, I don't feel angry about it. I just feel opposing now, me and Vinny argue, so I don't know how it sounds. Maybe I have to pay more attention to how it sounds. 
Because in my mind, it's one way, but in the voice, maybe it carries in a different way. You know, when people hear you disagree with them out loud in a certain tone, you know, I don't know what that's got to do with the point, but uh, got my attention for a minute. Thank you. Huh? <laughs> well, there's something in the way that we individually hear whatever we hear goes mm-hmm. to the it goes to the person in its own unique personal way and we're yeah. all grabbing at this idea that we need to agree and be in a group and all this crap and the, the more i look at it the bigger a pile of shit that truly is it doesn't have any relevance in my life if me and you agree about something or not one way or the other if you do agree with me or not it doesn't change how i think about what i'm talking about <laughs> so, so, where does the division with uh, people when we engage and then we get mad at each other for what we don't agree about, where does the anger come from and for what? It, the anger, the hmm. anger is the ego. And hmm. I, I, I had this discussion with Lisa B the other day, and and she said, um. She said someone had accused her of, of wanting her ego stroked. And I said, is it really that you're wanting your ego stroked or is it a self-worth thing? And and I explained to her the difference is ego is something that is built up from external, you know, praise from others or whatever. You know, oh, you did such a good job. That's your <laughs> ego yeah, being stroked. Yeah, yeah. Whereas self-worth all comes from within. Now, yeah, we can yeah. allow people to mess with our self-worth. We can be live crap that people want to put on us, labels that they want to put on us, that we allow to mess with our self-worth. But self-worth is all an internal thing. So when people get all butthurt and upset when someone else disagrees with them, you're basically taking away little little ticks from notches in their ego. You know, ego notches are like notches on a headboard, uh, if you uh, want to call uh, it like that. Uh, so you're erasing those little notches, and by golly, don't be erasing my little notches on my headboard, goddammit. Uh, Whereas if you have self-worth, you know, what you say is what you say. If someone disagrees with it, eh, you know, from their perspective, I probably am wrong. But from my perspective, I kind of I'm rather attached to what I think right now, hmm. until something else comes along that makes me change my mind. So you know, it's the anger I think really does stem from people getting their ego bruised. How dare you disagree with me? How dare you? Hmm. You just bruised my ego. Really, you think that's all that is? So- oh yeah, I think it. I think it all just comes down to a bruised ego. Hmm. How dare you? Well, could we? I guess we could uh, compare that to. A, there's a lot of shit compared to that. One. Oh well, let, let me go on to. Uh, I tried to ask you a question, and I straight off my question. I want to get back to the question. One okay. More, let me make one more try at this, because I don't know. I went way emotional instead of money, and but if the bankers don't kill you, right, I thought the medicine will. Uh-huh. And somehow I couldn't stay on, focused on that concept. I want to try to get back to it for the end of the show. <laughs> well, the, the bankers perpetuate the the synthetic medicine business. Oh, plus all the other crap. Well, wow. you can't you can't make money off of people that are healthy. You just no can't. no no. Of course not. So. Yeah, the bankers perpetuate the medicinal system because the medicinal system creates repeat customers, which creates more revenue. And yet the people suffering are the ones that are yelling for it to continue the loudest. It doesn't and make sense to me because... No, but that's that's where the educational system... You get the people by the educational system and you can control the media. Well, you can control the masses. Okay, but you heard, Benny. There's no better place to live and he's in the wonderful... Well, but then on the other breath, it's well, I could get arrested for you know smoking a joint. Well, how... Well, if that's paradise? See, what? Well, you know, I don't think that where I live, I don't think there's a better place to live. For me, where I live right now, 
And really, that's not a bad thing. You know? No, no, no. Mean, I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that your, see, your definition of lifestyle is way different than Vinny's. Vinny's a little confusing sometimes because, you know, he's, yeah. been, he's been around, he's been gone, he's come back, blah, blah, blah. So it's a, he's got a different way about him to explain things. <laughs> Takes a little time to figure out what the hell the man's talking about sometimes. Yeah. It's yeah, like it he purposely talks in some kind of redneck parable to, just to keep you thinking. And, you know, I do well, my best. It, it, it's a tough world, you know? Shit. Well, you know, the fun thing about parables is, hmm. is there are those, you know, like the princess and the pea kind of thing. <laughs> you know, or it yours. It gets in there, and it just, it something just hmm. sticks, you know? And, and you just kind of, you forget about it. And then it comes back and kind of rubs you the wrong way. And then you forget about it. And then it rubs you the wrong way. Yeah. And then eventually you start digging in and you go, oh, well, oh. What was it that made you put together the bankers or in some kind of cahoots with the medical professionals? I mean, some people would never put that together in their mind to see it. Do you, re- yeah, do you have when something? I researched When I researched Rockefellers. Ah, okay. You got a link, and I'll post that in the end of the notes for us. Uh, oh, Criminy, huh? And that's been years no? ago. I don't. Okay, well, I'll just, I'll just make. I'll do a, some digging and see if I no, can. No, no, no. I'll just type in uh, uh, research Rockefeller medicine. Yeah. People are capable of doing things for themselves on the internet. Yeah. And, and if they listen to the show, unless you do it yourself. But if they're listening to the show. Yeah, they get to the end here. I research Rockefeller medicine. I can do that. And uh, he was a nasty uh, ass individual. But remember, Man, but some re- of the shit he did out in Colorado. He uh, was a nasty ass individual. But remember, there's going to be equal amounts of both positive and negative information about Rockefeller on the internet. So oh, yeah. whatever the algorithms are tuned in to you for is what you're going to get back. If you're and see, that's where you have to have and the proper search engine. How do you do? That? All right. Don't don't hey. do Google. Hey, don't do Google. there you go. Well, what, I, the only one I've used now is uh, the Firefox one. See, and I use DuckDuckGo for a lot of that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, it's the Duck. I got a one of those too, but it's uh, it comes up when I open up my Firefox. It says DuckDuckGo ah. on my search bar right now. That, so, okay, that's you probably go. your default search engine. I tried to make it so, number one, but you know me and computers sometimes. Uh, I ask it to do shit, and it tells me to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be more forceful with a computer. You can't ask it. It's like, no, I don't feel like that. Well, but computers computer, are teenagers, basically. Yeah, but computer, I don't know. <laughs> so you got to be more like Grimm and just tell the fucking thing what to do the first time. <laughs> There you go. Well, they are they they are most definitely well. They're like teenagers and they're like three year olds. Yeah. You know, all at the same time. Of course, teenagers a lot of times are quite a bit like three year olds. But mm-hmm. yeah. Hey, you know what? You guys should do. Uh, spring is a few months away. Now, everybody that um, in our RLM has not everybody, but a lot of RLMers are springtime gardeners. We all give it a shot to try to grow something out there. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to remind everybody that we only got a few months of uh, you know, pre spring to get through and then it's planting time. So Yeah, and I got plant. my new Baker Creek catalog yesterday. See, and I was gonna say, don't be shy about, you know, maybe somebody's got some seeds that you want to try. If you ask them, they might want to swap for them. You never know. What's available yeah. out there, who buys from where, recommends this and that, and the other recipes because there's shit you can put in the soil that will help your food grow better. That's natural. And not this synthetic freaking Monsanto shit. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the, I, I guess the equivalent of physical additives, you know, like if you add uh, magnesium to your your diet through a, a pill form, you get the same results as if you ate a banana or a, an avocado. 
but it's a synthetic, so hmm, I question. But still, knowledge. I think I got the right name for that one, too. Because uh, sometimes I screw up my uh, comparisons. You know, I get the right idea, but the wrong name about something. <laughs> yeah. This marijuana stuff messes with your freaking mind. Tell you, Miss Mary. <laughs> Actually, I think it's just I'm 60, and, you know, some shit doesn't matter anymore. So if I say it wrong, fuck it. Ah, I'll fix it, or I won't. You know, it's not that important anyway. And the stuff that is important doesn't need to be explained or uh, cleaned up. It's just important. Like, fractional reserve banking is your enemy. And if you don't know what that means, I think it's time you find out. Go look it up. And if you can come out of that link and not see that there's a fucking problem with money, whoops, you're wasting your time here, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because, well, there's some basic fundamentals that are just common sense, you know? You don't, a government does not run if it's $21 trillion in debt. If your business or home was $20 in debt, Things would stop happening. <laughs> People don't extend your credit. They, it's see, it's nonsense. It just goes to show that the money is just nothing more than a fucking game. It's a control mechanism, creative accounting gone wild. And because it's comfortable, we all do it. There you go. Yeah. And the people that don't do it are the ones that aren't here on the internet doing what we're doing. So, hmm. you know, the people that are going to change shit, whatever shit may be, are the ones that are doing it. And they're taking the whole bucket down. With them. Everything looks worse from day to day, no matter what country you look at. Problems, problems, problems. They got problems. You know, they all got to raise the prices on this because of that. Tax you and punish you and all this shit. Well, and that's always put out there in the news because bad news sells. Why, Miss Mary? Tell me why. <laughs> I I don't know. You know, and why is it such a rarity when someone posts good news? Shouldn't shouldn't you know we be posting an awful lot of good news? Or wow, look at what this person did today. That's just pretty freaking awesome, or whatever. But no, no. I, that's why I brought up springs kind of around the corner. You know, after we get through these holidays. And then you get, you know, the, the last of it is that Valentine's Day shit. And once you get through that, then a couple of more weeks and then the sun starts looking for you again. And then you get to play with spring. So, yeah. yeah. But, <clears throat> hey, this gardening thing, because, you know what? I still was thinking today how ridiculous people that were preppers all this time, don't they see that they're really wasted all their time preparing for something that they're in the they're in control of ever happening one way or the other. They just don't communicate with each other and do anything about nothing. They just sit back and get told what to do by the system. That's good enough for them. I'll take that. It let me get my check and I'll be okay. See, that's the training and indoctrination stuff. Plus mm -hmm. taking all the work away didn't you know, that just made it easier for the state to just fuck you. Because when I was, just when I was turning 20, was the period of history where all the jobs started to disappear in the states. Manufacturing just took a shit. And yet, so many of us think, oh, we need to have jobs, we need to have this, we need to have that. And did we really have to work that hard a thousand years ago? Oh, no, <laughs> not we, but... Mm -hmm. Did people really have to, did they have to have jobs? Did they have to work outside <laughs> See? of See, that's what I mean. Wow. That's 50% of my argument was that. Jeez. Plus, they had better sources of fuel. So, if, if their life expectancy was shorter, that's no judgment of how they lived. That's what we are told. We're told their life expectancy is shorter. But did you know I heard on the radio going down to my to get my mom, bring her back from seeing the specialist, I'd heard that the U.S. life expectancy is now at a new low. Yeah. It's 78.6 years old. 
Well, I didn't know what the number was, but I saw the headline on Mines Media yesterday, I think. But not not my not my cup of tea, but I understand how it could be yours. Well, it's just it's kind of you know they keep saying that we're one of the most advanced countries in the world, no. and we've got the best medical system in the world, oh, and yet our life expectancy no. is dropping. Yeah, no, that's just, wow. That's talk just, about Captain Backwards. See, advertising you can say anything you please in advertising. Yeah. There's no law that forces an advertiser to tell the truth, or we wouldn't buy anything. But people True. are well. It, I still think someday we ought to do a show where you read the ingredients of something and ask me if I would eat it, and if I said yeah, it turns out to be like drain cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> you never know because it's got yeah these ingredients. These are the ingredients. So and so and so and so and so and so. Would you eat that? And you go, fuck no, and it turns out to be a Hershey's bar. You know? Yeah, because that's scary, ain't it? Be- that's how ignorant that we are as a collective. We've just been, and then we've got this human thing where, man, we can survive. We're like rats and roaches put together. If you take care of you, yourself, I mean, I'm still, I'm not young any, for, a, anymore, but I'm not old. So I'm kind of right, like I'm uh, kind of right in the middle at sixty instead of at the end. So yeah. Well, there, I encounter a lot of people my age and beyond that have you know outlasted their ability to walk. You know, something crippled them, and here I am, like a forty-year-old, like sir, bopping around, do, carrying a bag in my back, and everything's winking and dinking. So, hmm. and and because the lack of this, of stress from the state, because the place I live is peaceful and quiet, people get along. There's I don't know what you'd call a crime here. The kids spray painting some shit on something or breaking a window, and teenagers are teenagers. You know what do you do? Catch them and beat them up. There you go. Mm, beating them up, that, that's just going to make them more obnoxious. Maybe so, but, you know, that's life. So, you know, there's a real life and there's this TV life where everybody grows up like the fucking Brady children did, where their daddy is so sweet and lovable. And there's this other world where people hit their fucking kids when the kid doesn't do what their parent wants them to do. But that doesn't make what the parent wanted the right thing. It just means the control wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. See, and I was one of those. It was they couldn't control me, so they they tried all that shit, violence and punishments, and you took everything away, and you name it, they, but it never stuck. Oh, I tell you what, I would have much rather my mother spank my butt than ground me, because man, those groundings that sucked. Oh, I don't, I don't think they would have ever, ever wanted me to be home, grounded. That would have been a torture for them. <laughs> well, and see, my mom, especially when I got my first phone, which was a princess phone, a dial phone that I'm sure none of my grandchildren would be able to operate. But um, when I got my very first phone, when I turned 16 and I paid to get it installed and was in my room and there were certain rules because mom didn't want me just laying on my bed talking on the phone, yada, yada, yada. I thought I was the shit. Wow. I was. I was some stuff now because I had my very own phone line. Hmm. I didn't realize that I just gave mother another weapon in her arsenal. So whenever I screwed up, she would ground me from my phone. I couldn't use my phone for a week. I still had to keep paying for it, but I couldn't use my phone for a week. And being the good little child that I was, I'd come home from school and get ready to go to work, and I'd walk in my bedroom, and there's my mom laying on my phone, talking on my phone to her good friend. I tell you what, my mother was evil. (laughs) Well, you can look, yeah, you can look back now and laugh and joke about all that. Yeah, but I was mad when she did it, but yeah, I look back now and I go, damn. Do you know what? Damn, she was smart. But in our day when we went to high school and what, what seriously lacked that I saw, and I quit it, I quit at 15 and a half. Well, I was, I was there for a, my driver's license, but I, I mean, I was done with the school already. I was just going for the driver's license at this point, not doing anything else. <laughs> 
So 15 and a half, I was finished with the shit. And I, and when I look back and, and think about the crap that they tried to teach me, it was like, oh, no. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But mm-hmm. when you're young and you don't realize that the whole thing is just a stinking trap, <laughs> you volunteer to get to you you volunteer to lay down and expose yourself basically with your own consent, but you're tricked into it. You don't even know that's what's happening when it's happening. So <laughs> wow. So fortunate for me, when I was trying to get into, you know, to a job that paid better money and shit like that, it was at the time where I was hanging out in the bar where people that had, had been in that life were still talking to me and saying, hey, you ever look at shit like this? And I was weighing the balances out. And I went with the, uh, I went with the anarchist do no harm kind of thing as a background instead of a, I'm going to make it to the top. You know, one of those. Yeah. Well, it's what your definition of the top is. Still, or what it, your definition of success is. It it disappointed a lot of people that, you know, in my life, when I look back, the decisions that I make, they make all their decisions based on money. And I make my decisions based on how the fuck I feel about it at the moment. <laughs> and whatever I yeah. choose, I follow through with it. <laughs> So there you go. Oh, well, there you go. And life is life is a beautiful fucking trip in the long run. I've got great memories of everything, and I've got a few shitty memories of a few things. Isolated, you know, mostly with a few people, just a few. But they were in. They spent a lot of time in my life. But you know, over sixty years, they spent less than they did more. You know, way less because I'm so old now. But. Getting through all that uh, growing up crap and and actually learning something from it that that's a never ending process I think I think I'll always consider that I'm doing that I hope that I'm learning something I didn't think of yesterday. There you go. Because everything I always think it's my idea because I'm the one that's looking at it and going oh holy shit I never thought of that so. Because I got a huge ego, like Donald Trump there, little missy, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, anyway, go. thanks a lot for coming along on the dork table this week and playing with me and Vincent. Appreciate well, that. Well, certainly. Thank you and, for letting me play. Oh, yeah. And then me and Vinny are going to come back on Tuesday night and argue some more for everybody's visual and mental entertainment. And uh, if you want to do the lineup, you can. If you don't, uh, there's a schedule on the reallibertymedia.com. Just open it up and go click, and uh, there's a little bit more stuff going on. Right, man? That's right. There's lots of stuff going on all right. the time. And Mary knows everything. And what Mary doesn't know, she makes up. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll be a Henry Kissinger fan for the rest of my days. I hope. I'm. I know just enough to be to get in trouble. You know that slug is still alive. Yeah. That parasite. He is the greasiest freaking piece of slime on the planet, and not, he can live through anything. He looks like like SpongeBob SquarePants with glasses on. <laughs> Keith Richards oh. looks better, and that's saying something. And Keith is worn. Poor Keith. You gotta think yeah. of the world we're gonna leave, Keith. Can't leave him a shittier mess than he came into. Well, so, yeah, I gotta leave something for him and the cockroaches to eat. We got so. some work ahead of us, I'm telling you. But yeah. Anyway, you got anything to close with besides uh, thanks, Grimner, for all the help that you've uh, given us doing the radio? Not really. And, uh, Just thanks, Grimmy. Thank you. And to the real thanks liberty. Thanks everybody that listens yeah, in. And you real liberty medians. <laughs> The our alumners. <laughs> our alumners. <laughs> yep. Yep. Anyway. So. And remember, I was for Christmas. Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Thought I'd get you with that. Well, uh, with the gremlin voice, that's. Well, you know what we got to do is I got a, uh, I've got a camera on my Lennox computer. 
Linux, whatever, the other computer. And uh, uh-huh. we're going to have to do, <clears throat> in the wintertime, we'll have to do a, a an Eeyore commemorative show. <laughs> so yep. if you get in a, be a, a big old, I can switch computers if I have to, but this computer doesn't have a camera. But it, I can see your camera. So I think you should do uh-huh. the, the Eeyore commemorative performance because uh-huh. <laughs> those are priceless. <laughs> Maybe we could get well, maybe we could even get a few folks to come over and say hi. <laughs> like maybe Gribner, Benny and Moose Girl. <laughs> it could be funny. Cause you're, it could be funny. I it, got Eeyore and I've got um a minions. Because that like Eeyore suit on. is as memorable as the time I got Miss B to take her hair down. Oh Lordy, yeah. Mm. She got a lot of hair. Yeah, but see, Miss B went all anti-social down in uh, Australia. So uh, people go through moods. They don't want to, you yeah. know, they want to be left be of let me be for a bit. So I understood that. So I, I did, but I, I still think be down there. And uh, that's one of those things that we did at in uh, World Truth that I don't think of it often, but when I do, it's it's good memory. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> anyway, I'm here occasionally yet, but thanks everybody for hanging out. See you next time. See you. Love you. Bye.